Hey, you guys, welcome to You Be Right Podcast, uh, presented by AML Media. Love you, Mom. Uh, I'm Gene Laborde, my co host, Stephen Laborde, working all the hard work, doing all the good stuff. Is Rachel Laborde. This is You Be Right Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Let's go have some fun. We're on. We're on doing it. Uh, it's the day before Memorial Day. Um, we're just, I, I'm, I was down here, I was trying to make you cry. I thought I might be able to get a tear out of you with that, uh, Iam Tongi guy. That was good, though. He is really, uh, something about Polynesians, and usually they're severely overweight. Yeah, like that dude who did, uh, Over the Rainbow. Yeah, that was a sad story. He died. Bro, he was on stage with, like, oxygen in his nose Yeah, that shit's crazy. He was, like, big, big. But, yeah, the Polynesians have a really good, uh, musical kind of culture. Look at, look at, um... Jordan Mailata. Yeah. It's not fair that he's that talented as a musician and a singer, and he is a left tackle. Yeah, and, and also played professional rugby because he has his God-given muscles and height and toughness. Yeah, he's like, what? And a likable guy. Yeah. Because you can't, you can't have it all, but this... I like to tell myself that he's actually tortured because he's uh, gay, actually. He's got to have something negative going on. I was going to say, maybe his math isn't that great or something. Maybe he, maybe he struggled in middle school with the, with geometry. Yeah. I mean, if that's as bad as his life has got, well, you know. But but kudos. that's where they just go, um, yeah, we're pretty sure you're going to be a professional athlete. You're not going to need math. You'll have a, We already have an accountant ready for, for the you. For the record, it's not negative that he would be gay. It would be a struggle to be closeted and gay Is was the point I was making. Just to put that out there. I love yeah, the gays. But- Something to, nah, dude. Those Polynesians. He probably. Nah, I know. He's probably a pussy hound, dude. Well, he's married. Yeah. Not that I mean. Is, does he have kids? I don't think so. He's a young guy. He's like fucking. He's like twenty. He's gonna watch. We're gonna. There's gonna be other mulattoes in the NFL now. Well, with those genetics, yeah. Unless he's got, he, he might be one of those big guys who who has like a uh, a wife that's like five two. You see that, but a lot of times, he's a lot of times with black athletes like. They get a girl that's big too, like not always fat, but I, I, I have something in there like <laughs> genetically. I want. Well, that's to, a, that's a big was a big thing of yours. Oh yeah, I was. I, I had got, never considered like when it came to, like dating or like being attracted to a girl, like what kind of athletic children will we have? I would look past the face. If I was like, I really, if I really want children, I could look past the face and go. I better get something out of this, but it's kind of double-edged sword because I'm thinking male, because I don't, you know, I don't want to have this gigantic. You can be tall and even kind of big and still be an attractive woman, but oh, it can go way off the rails. That's what I'm saying, and with our genetics. But I will not. My kids will not be fat. Like I will, I will be looked upon as an abusive father before I let my kids get fat. Yeah, but it's you. Your kids. It's a hard thing to make your kids do something if you don't do it. You're right. Monkey see, monkey do. It's hard. But that's where I, I would, I, I think I might get in trouble for, like, people would be like, you're taking this too far. I'm like, no, when he's 18 or 19, they can hate me. But if they're not having heart issues at 32, yeah. I'll be like, then I can say, you're welcome. Yeah, right. That's it. <clears throat> that's, uh. I think a good parenting comes down to, like, you know how some parents are like, they're also my best friend? Hold on. Do we sound really poppy? Some things, like... What's poppy making mean? Making a noise. Like, everything, it's like... On, like, anytime we touch the table. Is it the table? Is that what's... You wouldn't have adjusted the board since the last episode, right? No. But it was weird. Like you that's why you looked at me, right? Mm-hmm. You were kinda hearing something. Yeah. It's a little bit better now. But like anytime we did the adjustment is like so I just feel now. Yeah, I turned down the headphone out a little bit. That's oh that, yeah, we had that before, remember? Where you were getting you were hearing at the house, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's better. Um, 
Sorry, technical issues. Want to make the sound quality best for you guys. Yeah. Well, let's, let's be honest. Some of my favorite podcasts, if the sound is, is even a little goofy, I just won't. I just can't. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'll muscle through only two of them, but that's that's about it. Uh, but well, uh, what I wanted to talk about, um, starting to get warm weather, busted out the grill. Uh, we're going to be having some cookout after this. Uh, once again, happy Memorial. Independence Memorial Day. Memorial Day. Happy America. That's just one of those American holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red, white, and blue. Cook some food. Um, what is your fa- like? Uh, you can only have one grilled food the rest of your life, or what? What's your favorite grilled food, barbecue style? It has to be barbecue, like barbecue as in it, not it, flavor, it, just on the grill. Okay, S- and then smoker or whatever, just outside cooking. I'm technique. a basic bitch. I love mm-hmm. cheeseburgers. That's it's hard to not just a, a simple. Now I, I like to doctor them up a little bit, uh, you know. But if 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 I'm at a barbecue and they just throw some patties on and a piece of cheese, I'm like. I'm, I'm having that. Yeah. And I love a dog. With the simple bun. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, because sometimes I, because I used to be back when I was just, I looked at the size of food. I was like, I want the Kaiser so I can put two patties on there yeah. and I'm going to load it up. With mayo. And I don't want, I'm going to eat in a corner you so no mayo, one. You put mayo on a burger? If I, yeah, if I can. My optional um, is thin slice of tomato, obviously cheese. And I go, I want Kraft. Yeah, okay, singles. Uh, yeah. Fake that's American the, cheese. That's the best melted. It gets melted good. Same with breakfast sandwiches. Um, tiny bit of ketchup, like a tiny bit of ketchup. And then I'd say medium mustard, medium mayo. I want the mayonnaise touching the tomato. That's very important. That's on big s- for the tomato, people that like, yeah. On that's sandwiches, too. And then anything else I can leave or take. Really not a big lettuce guy. On a, on a burger. Oh, you don't like the texture of a nice if crispy it's, lettuce? If it's there, but a lot of times, a lot of times I'm doing the cooking, or if you're somewhere that it's not perfect, it's that uh, lettuce is a little beat up. And it's a little floppy. Yeah, it's a little warm. Yeah. Um, but if it's on there, I'll take it. Uh, and then uh, pickles. I'm a big pickle guy, but if I don't have it, I don't need it. Yeah. But Wait. I can simply just, um, just burger cheese and, and bun. meat. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, if I had like that's so. If you had your druthers, is the word right? Isn't that? Yeah, yeah. If you had your druthers, what would be your hamburger? It would be uh, mayo, little bit of, of spicy mustard, little bit of onion, lettuce, and obviously some form of American cheese. Mm-hmm. No ketchup. Yeah, y'all. T- the onion is is definitely. Uh, but it's got to be the right onion because sometimes because there's I'm I'm learning the older I'm getting you, not all onions are made the same. I'm a whore for onions, dude. I'll put them on there. Uh, yeah. But once again, if it's on there, especially if it's like the sandwich method, when someone makes it for you, it tastes better. So if someone's throwing whatever. The only thing I will say I do not like is relish. What about on a dog? I mean, I, it's not a go-to for me, but if there's relish, if someone handed, if if I'm at a barbecue and someone hands me a dog and there's relish on there, okay. But I love pickle, but relish is sweet pickle. I like yeah. dill. I don't like the sweet, the, like bread and butter pickles and because stuff. It's it's a really good combo though with mustard. Yeah, kind of cancel each other. But again, I don't even have uh, relish at my house. So, no. Know. The only time I've ever had relish is when you get the three pack from Sam's Club of the big mustard, Mm -hmm. ketchup, and relish. And that relish sticks around for five years. Back in the day, I used to eat a little bit of fish and tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Is relish's best moment. I'm pretty sure the reason I like shrimp cocktail and I like... That's not tartar sauce. I know, no, no, I was oh, okay. going to say, I'm pretty sure the reason I like shrimp cocktail is because I love cocktail sauce really cocktail a lot. Cocktail sauce is really good. And uh, the reason I think sometimes I want fish, is chip, fish and chips is because I just want some <laughs> tartar, tartar sauce. sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Although, uh, another thing, I never I never had it because this was out, out of my, um, re- you know out of the realm of my palate back in the day but if you were to have a nice piece of white fish with some vinegar on it yeah that would probably be pretty good i've been telling you i've been getting real into the vinegar that's a uh it's one of the only ways that i've learned you can re- revive fries a little bit yeah you know when yeah. you get them home from takeout not even in the fridge but 
By the time they're home, they sweat out a weird way. Air fry them to the point where the little ones are starting to get like like rock mm. hard. Not rock hard, but close to it. Really crispy. And as soon as you pour it out, dump vinegar on it. Mm. And you can hear it like sizzle. It'll break them down a little bit too. Yeah, like it, it you're never gonna be able to get the the crispy fry again, but I can recreate a salty vinegary yeah. potato stick. And once again, the older I get, the more I, I uh, walk away from fries. Yeah, me too, big time. Like uh, the, the fries to me are, if I like, if I, I usually get it, like when I go to a diner or something. Reuben is usually my go-to. Diners always have good fries. But yeah, so the fries are just like to let my food kind of cool down. Like, but, like when I when I go get fast food, I never get the fries. I get I will get a uh, a smaller a medium. And usually, if I get a medium, I don't finish it, and that's literally to get me from Mickey D's to home. Yeah, yeah, those car fries are good. You know, that's that's the only point. Because by the time I'm home, I'm like, I want, I, I gotta eat my nuggies while they're hot. So you shouldn't call them nuggies. <sighs> Please know. don't do that. I know. Around me, it's fine. Rachel, it's fine. But you getting, don't want to do that. Getting my chicken nuggets in me. Yeah, just nuggets is good. Rachel, what's your burger uh, condiment? I know you don't eat uh, beef, but. On Cheese a vegan burger and ketchup. You like ketchup on the burg? Yeah. Okay. She's a pretty big ketchup person. Yeah. You, uh, she eats like when she's eating fries and she's in her m- fry eating mode, she puts down a good amount of ketchup with them. Yeah. If they're good enough fries, I won't use anything. That's the that's yeah. the testament of a good fry. Definitely. But if they need something, if it's a fry, I want ketchup. If it's something like. A chicken nugget or something, then I want ranch. But a tater tot, I also want ketchup. Yeah, ranch on a nugget. Yeah, you're wild. I'll do ranch on a. That's the only thing I would dip a nugget in. But okay, so not the only one. But I didn't even cross my mind that you would. What's your nugget? Barbecue or honey mustard, but it has to be good honey mustard. Every Ah, once in a while, I'll eat barbecue, but I don't want that as my only option. Like I would have a little barbecue, but then like salty something to even it out. I apologize to the fans if this was talked about last podcast, but I told you about the uh, hot mustard option at McDonald's. Did I not? No, I don't know. Hot honey. No, it's called hot mustard. It says I, on the container. Hot, hot honey, honey mustard. Well, yeah, it's hot honey mustard. Dude, game. Big J turned me on to it. He was talking about it enough where I took the risk. You know, because you yeah, only get two sauces, yeah, really. Yeah, they're fucking weird with the sauces. You used to just get a handful of them. Mm-hmm. But, nah, dude, that is my, that's my now go-to. Because okay. it, it almost, it, 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 it itches the honey mustard, obviously. It itches a little bit of the spiciness. Because a lot of times what I'll do with nuggets is uh, one buffalo, one ranch. Okay. And do the double dip. You get nuggets a lot more than I do, I think. I usually get a four-piece. You know, I get the smallest nugget you can get on the side. Okay. Yeah. Unless I'm getting a chicken sandwich, because then I'll just do the chicken sandwich. Okay. Yeah. But my go-to McDonald's uh, is just the double cheeseburger with extra onions. Nah, quarter pounder with cheese, dog. They don't do the same onions on there. Yeah, they do. Are you sure it's still the minced onion? I get, I you know, quarter pounder every week. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I do really get that, and then uh, either the four or six nuggets. And then meal with one of them because they have that is the best fountain soda is the McDonald's yeah, fountain bro, soda. I never ever ever get a fountain soda or no? fries. I just go sandwiches. I oh, know I can see it, but they have the best fuck. You you're a soda guy. You drink a lot of soda pops. Yeah, I don't know. I'm uh, I, I like a canned beverage. I I just I, plus they charge you so much for a fucking soda. True. Anywho. Let's talk, if we're going to go oh, food, let's yeah. do Memorial Day barbecue type food. Because, well, uh, you know. Went off on a rant there. Got all excited about the hot mustard. Just wanted to share it yeah. for the people. But if I, I just wanted to say, like, aside from the burger and the dog, if you cook up some uh, pork ribs, that's my, like. A good pork rib. Dude. You can so really good. fuck ribs up. You can really make <laughs> shitty what, ribs. How, overcook them? Overcook or buy cheap them. ass ribs, maybe. Yeah, or just not really know what you're doing, because I- I've fucked up ribs before, uh, not knowing, like, you know, there's like a, you gotta, there's a certain thing you're supposed to take off of them that really, really change the dynamic of them. Is it that, like, it's kind of like Silvery. a layer of car... Yeah, yeah it's on the back side of them, and it's not always easy to get off. But it makes it like a snap. 
when you get rid of it, it kind of loses. Yeah, it. well, it makes it so like the meat evenly cooks better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also, it's one of those things like really the best way to do a rib is like do it in the oven low and slow, slow cook them for like three hours or whatever it is, and then put them on the barbecue or put them on the grill to get the glaze. Okay. But we grew up kind of like, because that's how I like to cook. Like when we would go to the cabin and stuff, like dad's kind of hobby, like he's smoking meat. Yes, because you wake up early, you get the wood chips going, just the old school Coleman. It's a good excuse to make a rum and coke earlier in the day. Yeah, exactly, and get the fire started early. But it's same way with his pellets. It's like look at all this wood my my son chopped, down, my yeah. son stacked. Yeah, while he just chainsawed everything. But yeah, but the. I think, and it's because it probably was just overdone. Like the beef rib is, you have to. You gotta eat like twenty ribs to fill you up. That's what beef I because it's all just. Now maybe it wasn't just great ones, but there's like, so it's so yeah. thin it's like and gristly. Yeah. By the end of it, you're just you got these gigantic bones. And That's you're like, why I specified pork ribs. Mm, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, like. You know, like, uh, bar- ch- I'm not a big chicken guy, which people love chicken on the grill. Well, that's why I don't do chicken breasts on the grill. Uh-huh, yeah. That's what we always had. You yeah, know, like, yeah. when we do chicken. Now, I will say, if you're going to do chicken breast on the grill, get the bone. Get this, Keep the skin on it and get the bone. It'll help keep it moist. The juice in there, yeah. Yeah, if you just get boneless, yeah, yeah, you're right. skinless chicken breasts which is like the most common option there, do skewers and flash cook those motherfuckers. Yeah. You know, kind of like an Asian skewer. And the time, like do a brine. Um, But yeah, I do chicken thighs and chicken legs. Uh, I marinate them and I cook them low and slow. And uh, you basically can like, if you dry out the dark meat, now it's nice, moist. I like dark meat actually. Yeah, especially on the grill. That's the way to go. And yeah. then you, I get the um, the skin on the chicken thigh because you can turn that into like almost like a crisp. Yeah, like a like an appetizer. Oh yeah, I mean, you, that's your first thing you're eating off. Yeah, that chicken thing. thighs. I feel like chicken thighs used to be like what poor people ate. They're my favorite chi- piece of chicken. That's the be- chicken thighs and chicken legs are the way to go on the grill. And I really don't understand the the uh, the distaste people have for dark meat. I think it's because chicken doesn't have that much of a flavor. Even the dark meat doesn't taste like. You know. You're going for moisture, and if you're cooking just on a normal gas grill, uh, you're going to lose a lot of that moisture just by cooking it thoroughly. So mm. that's what we're doing tonight: is chicken thighs. I'm going to do half teriyaki, half barbecue. Um, they're marinating now in a nice my secret recipe of marinade. And then, uh, no, we were having a hard time on sides because. I normally would go. Um, if you had, let's go back to the druthers. This is you're having the perfect barbecue. Like you're well, going to someone else's barbecue, and they're saying, you "Good the menu, really good." I want some. I want mom's homemade s- potato salad or macaroni salad, mm. and that's something I'm I'm picking at. Like when we get there, while shit's cooking, uh, I will really good corn on the cob. Okay. When corn on the cob sucks, when it's soft and like doesn't have the flavor, because we're lucky growing up next, we get that del- corn, get that jerk. Yeah, that shit was sweet, popped. It would fucking I could yeah, demolish a baddie or corn is like yeah, you t- and it sucks. It's like an apple. You take you take your. It's hard to prepare to get that butter on there. It's hot. You're burning your hand. Get it all over the salt and pepper. And you take that first bite and you go fuck. This thing sucks. Yeah, yeah. I, I like uh, for a veg. First and foremost, quite frankly, if I'm going to barbecue, I don't even care if there's a vegetable. Well, I was going to say that <laughs> corn's as much butter and salt I, I well, put on too, there. Yeah. It's already not a vegetable just being corn, but... But I like the uh, baked potato and the foil on the grill. We were going to do that. It'd take a long time, though. Yeah. Um, And that, that was a thing. I guess when I go to barbecues, I'm not really looking at sides, dude. I'm a meat man. Like, I'm fucking... Like, as long as that meat is good, you could have fucking a bowl of beans and i'll be happy yeah i love baked beans i was gonna say that's a good side I, yeah i was i was looking for the worst type of thing but yeah baked, baked beans, beans actually good. is a really that's it's a, a good great, sign barbecues don't have a lot of sides like you 
like potato salad and specifically potato salad is like American as it gets mm -hmm. for barbecue. I'm not a huge. I, I don't dislike it, but well, and you're weird too. Like you would, I I would go and say the only time you're eating uh, potato salad is mom. At our own house, yeah, I, or her if she brought it to Uncle Mike's. Yeah, yeah, I'm very distrustful of home cooking sometimes. Even f you know, um, like even when um, I don't want to say anyone particular, but like fat uh, somebody we knew very well would bring over like a dish they cooked at home. I'm like iffy on it, you know. I'll uh, you know, and I, I bring us a pizza or something. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but Bring that's all me. That's a me thing in terms of like I, I just know like hygiene isn't isn't really a uh, top priority for home cooking. Yeah, and you learn that in an office too, all the potlucks and stuff. Like I'm very judgmental on people's yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, on their crock pot. Like clean those leaks over, or get a new one. They're not that expensive. It's not even like because crock pots get st shit stuck to them. I get that, but not only <laughs> like. People the outside things. where like you could see like there's yeah, a line I, I of the old. I mean, but I'm more worried about sneezing and cats on counters and shit. People, you know, people subconsciously pick things out of their nose and fucking. The second I know someone has a cat, I I I just Definitely. a little bit not not bad. I don't just assume the worst because I I got I if I know you then I'll I'll know. But like you know someone that you're just the guy from accounting. Who they were doing the chili contest, and he he's got a picture of a cat on his desk. <laughs> well, that guy's you know fuck that guy anyway. I'm I'm going. I think I'm not gonna like his chili. Yeah. Um, I get excited uh, when I see the um, the fruit dish that you get. But it's four different fruits with that yogurt in the middle thing. Oh, uh, that yeah yeah. It's not even. Know. It's like. Ice cream. It's, it's like it's, it's like so whipped, sweet. It's like flavored whipped cream yeah. or something. I love that. The cool get, whip. Get some. Yeah, and it gets picked over too. I get pissed. The green isn't that bad, guys. The normal melon with that dip is really well. Yeah, good. any fruit with that dip is good. But yeah, I, quite frankly, I'm skipping over most of that thing. For me, a side is like just somebody please make macaroni and cheese. That's what I was gonna. That's say. what I was gonna. For say. every event, it works. You know what I mean? Like, people will really bring over, like, a baked ziti for a barbecue. It's like, no. Nah. You could have saved yourself a lot of time by just making, dude, even the simplest mac and cheese. Yeah, for real. You don't have to always double bake. That was one thing. It was good, but everyone in our family always double bakes their mac and cheese. And if you do it right and you get the crumble top, that's awesome. But a lot of times you just end up drying out yeah. the whole mac and cheese. Yeah, definitely. It, 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 if you fuck up baked mac and cheese, it's it's not good. Then it becomes just noodles with yellow remnants. Mm -hmm. Then it's worse than a craft. See, I, a craft can get it done for me every day. Well, no, day. that's what I'm saying. Like, you might as well do craft if you're going to fuck up the baked mac and cheese. And if you can't cook, especially if you're in an office or something, Velveeta and shells. Super simple. Always delivers. I, I kind of imagine that the hot luck thing is going away people working from home and shit well now and yeah i don't think that's a bad thing although i was re i've read a few uh news stories recently where a lot of ceos and stuff are coming out and saying like work from home is really bringing down the productivity of their companies they're gonna yeah, fight because people get work from home jobs so they can don't have to work and but they can regardless of who or why i mean it becomes a trend and there's gonna be people it just sucks because that's gonna root it's like everything else in this fucking world. Some people are going to ruin it for the vast majority of, of them. Yeah, of course. But it's becoming like something that's in the, the lexicon of I, CEOs and shit. I also put in there, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt because these motherfuckers want to be able to have as much control of you as they can. So working from home gives them an, another veil between you and them. I agree with you. And you're right, probably productivity, but also... Our economy is not that great right now, so are you taking into consideration of that? Uh, people, there's also just people that don't want to work that aren't working, so they're, you're not filling all of your positions. Regardless of the the backlog of why they're saying this, it's not just like one or two, you know. I yeah, and they're probably right, and I, I want to fight against it just because I'll fight the man on everything. Oh yeah, fuck them. Uh, but I, I don't even work from home, but I I do think. 
positions that like linemen and electricians can't work from home all right mm-hmm. but I, I do like to imagine that in the future we have the in- everywhere has the internet no one even has landlines anymore uh working from home i think will be good for w- mothers with children and things like that oh yeah that's where i see it coming like let's fight for it maybe we'll have to revamp it maybe put in some soft you know different softwares that make because people are fucking off at these work from home jobs well, and ex- but. executives are realizing that they like working from home too like my work they were pushing to go back go back and then like the a high up in the company said you know i i want to stay this mm-hmm. way i like it this way so i think it goes both ways well that goes down to having good hires Mm-hmm. I always say when people, you know, we talk about you working from home, you work later mm-hmm. because you don't have to fucking have the pit, you know, pissed off travel and all this stuff. Sometimes you'll be on till six o'clock just because you're like, oh, I want my morning to be a little bit easier. Yeah. You and never I'm not worried about sitting and driving an hour to get home in traffic. You're also a reasonable person. <laughs> that's not a dumb idiot because they're <laughs> that Uber driver. We had <laughs> the nice guy that was like we were we were thinking he was asking to be our friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, like, he was working for the state of Pittsburgh. And he goes, yeah, I got fired because, uh, well, we had indifferences. The indifference was I didn't work when I worked from home. Like, he just admitted. He was like, yeah, no, I played video games the whole time, basically. Well, those, yeah. are the, yeah, those are the people who are ruining it. Because actually, whenever, it whenever my company first went home, productivity went way up and it was because it was all the current people and i think they wanted to stay that way so they were like yeah making sure but then the new people that we then hired when we were already work from home was when things started going downhill because then people are like oh work from home job i don't have to yeah do anything cool that's another thing too is if a lot of i see a lot of uh jobs they're selling their job by it it being a work from home yeah like that's the second thing yeah and it's like well you know you're not you're gonna get a mixed bag you know what i mean so i i i really don't think it's gonna go away just because there's too many people who love it but you know there's a reason that they're mentioning it is you know the executives and again you're right at the end of the day it's just about control and also like and people do take advantage so you know of course and then i i like I always think there's always someone pushing an agenda for sales of some sorts. All of these office buildings. You look at a place like Pittsburgh, where like this is a smaller city, really. When you look at like the size of it, how many buildings mm-hmm. there are, there's a bunch of these cities that like a whole business is um, commercial real estate. Commercial real estate. Yeah, that's good. so. These people are going to these CEOs and going, I, t- I, I, if I looked at your books, I bet I could find that you're you're missing out you know what i mean like your product your production's low so there's a salesman pushing the ceo of being like you want people in the office well that industry is taking the biggest hit right now is dude, commercial real estate i'm sorry fans i have to trim my nose hairs ah uh, dude for the last two days i've been going nuts at my nose it itches so much i got two hairs that are stabbing me right here and i can't it itches like i look like a fucking coke head are they like. your first nose hairs and not fir- first noticeable ones, ones that are I noticed peaked out. I blew my nose the other day, and I was like, and I tugged on it, and I was like, oh. I bought a new nose hair trimmer. I'm going to get, look, this is fucking obnoxious, dude. Yeah. And I woke up, <laughs> like, I woke up, and I was like, my nose kind of hurts, and I think all night in my sleep, I was just like, just Yeah, you can't really itch your nose without looking like a nut. We could wax them out. Whew, no, I've heard really bad things about that. Waxing your nose? Waxing your nose. You don't want to pull that pore out. Those hairs are in there for a very specific reason. So you shouldn't pluck it? Either? Not. I'm not pluck. I'm going to just use it. I'm going to get a trimmer because at least then there's still some hair there. Oh. It doesn't pull the whole follicle out. Yeah, man. And the, wor- the last thing you want is any kind of pimple or blemish in your nose. Well, that and also... That shit hurts. As a smoker... I notice, like, when I blow my nose in the morning, at some dark bugs. I don't get that. I mean, it's maybe the way you smoke, you know, everyone. Because I do kind of, like, French inhale. Like, I, I take a puff, and, like, a little bit does go in my nose. Maybe. But, yeah, I, I, that's weird that you say I just bought a nose hair trimmer. And it worked like a charm. Made in China, baby. Made in China. Yeah. China. 
All right, guys, thanks for listening. If you're really enjoying this stuff, please listen to our Patreon. Uh, you get some behind-the-scenes stuff. Get to see us for who, I guess, who we really are. And uh, get to see our smoke breaks, which are always a good time. Check it out. We're going to keep putting more and more great stuff on there. Thanks for listening. All right. Um, got sorry. the grill clean. Got the grill clean. I'm excited. No smoke break this week. No smoke break this week just because it's, it's festive. We'll get you other stuff, like we've said, but... We're trying to get the festivities and not being too late, you know, because we got to make sure Rachel's in bed by 10 o'clock or she gets real cranky. I thought you had off tomorrow. No, she does. She just gets real cranky. Okay. No, I don't. <laughs> um, that was not convincing the way you said that, Rachel. <laughs> no, I'm not. I said I'm not on steroids. <laughs> uh, but no, one t- I... Um, Listening to an audio book yesterday, I found myself in a really precarious situation where... Um, I'm watch. I, I'm, I'm watching it on YouTube because it's free. Okay, but you can't really watch an audio book. That's what I was gonna say. Does it just have like a still no? Image? I'm playing some games. Okay, and I had it on. It's a story called. It's a true story called Communion about some uh, uh, um, alien abduction story. Really fascinating story. But anywho, I, I I had I was like fucking six hours in, and I didn't feel like playing games anymore. And, like, I was sitting there like, there's an hour left in this. I've come this far. So I just sat, kind of lounged with my eyes closed and finished that, the first half of the audio book. And it was really um, pleasant because I wasn't on my phone. Um, a, good, a good book, audio book, is really a nice change of pace. So for everybody out there, give, give it a shot if you haven't yet. Now, I'm going to give you the... Uh less educated per version of that but that is kind of what i do when i get home from work now it's not for an hour but usually the way it times up no, this was seven hours no no you were listening to it but then for an hour oh, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. kind okay. of it's almost like meditation a little bit right now so like what i do when i get home from work i usually have a half hour to 45 minutes left on my one of my favorite podcasts and it's all audio there's no video to it so i like to go in bed turn my fan on get comfy under my sheet just the sheet Mm -hmm. and just kind of close my eyes i don't really sleep i almost go into a meditation of like half sleep this like kind of feels good yeah i'm like bordering that line of like i know you mean yeah it's almost like that a narcotic of of like oh it feels so good no i'm still awake have you ever (laughs) have you ever done a lot of speed or some type of upper but then tried to go to bed and you never fall asleep, but you hit this weird headspace where, like, you are resting, but you're not out like a light. Like, even, like, after a long night of cocaine. Hypothetically, now, this guy I know. Okay. He went to a Tool concert with his brother. Okay. And they did uh, Ecstasy together. Oh, yeah, you had to go, you had to drive the next day. That's this right. guy had to drive the next day. You're not fooling everybody. You mean hypothetically. Me. Well, you mean I had his Hypothetically, sit in the car. me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was that. It was because also, it's like, for me, one of my favorite things is to get in bed when the sheets are a little cold and rub my feet together. It feels so fucking yeah, good. I you know what that. I mean? Because I don't wear socks. You know, I'm an, obviously a no sock I'm a sock weird, person. bro. I never don't have socks when I sleep. Never. That's fucking lunatic, dude. I, I, love- I don't, as much as I can sleep, as good as I am at sleeping, I'm pretty sure if I was pissed drunk, I don't know if I could, I'm well, not pissed drunk. I, sleeping with socks on to me, you might as well be asking me to fucking swim in a hoodie, dude. Yeah, I. Take your socks off? Yeah, I can, I can't sleep with socks on. One of my favorite parts about getting into bed is rubbing my feet on cold new sheets. Okay, well, that's why. Hey, I, each know, their own. Each I their will own. say. Um, but do you ever wake up and the hairs on your feet itch like no, a motherfucker? No, never. No, and I'm hairier than you. I, that's one I'm of the not, things. I'm like, not super hairy, but hairier than you. That's one of the things I, I love taking my socks off, especially when I ha- had to wear dress socks. Getting home, it, it, it was like mom used to say, like when she'd get home, they'd take her bra off after a long hard day. That's like every woman I imagine. Yeah, I'm is. sure. I would get home, and my pants would be off basically while I'm getting in the door. I'm like, get this belt and dress pants off me, and to peel those socks off. And a lot of times, I'm like, Rachel, will you take my socks off for me? Ridiculous. Listen, and it's not because I can't, but 
it feels really good to have her do it really slow. It's almost like sensual. It's like, oh, and then I just get in there and scratch up that hair uh, to the points of blood sometimes. Wow. Maybe not, but but like. But you that's know, your actual leg hair area. Yes, but also the top of the feet hair. I, there's barely any there. Maybe it's because I don't have enough. Could be. Hair that the bigger ones are kind of like, po- the, the few I have are poking plus, through there. Plus dress socks are thin. Mm-hmm. So I could see how you could add some hair picking through there. But do you, um, when you bang, do you take your socks off? Usually, because well, I normally don't have socks. Like, for the first thing, if I wake up on a day that I'm not leaving the house, I don't even put socks on. That's crazy. All right, yeah. I'm but, I, I recognize yeah, I, I'm in the, uh, the, the smaller group here in that I don't even think about not ha- or taking my socks off. <laughs> Especially... Not being a married man and being in a relationship for so long, you know, yeah, if we were somewhere crazy, but, you know, we're in bed, so my socks are already yeah, off, okay. and teeth might already be brushed. I gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I, uh, but on, I wanted to talk about this because, um, I don't know if you know this story, but it, it was, uh, compelling to me. Have you ever heard of Brandon Bullsworth? Burlsworth. Burlsworth. I tried watching this movie, and I turned it off real quick. See? I, I was going to say you're not going to like the movie because it's very... It's not done by Disney, but it's very... Um, it's christian Yeah, but you fall in... I, I mean, dude, I was tearing up a good amount of this movie. Okay. It was... It was and, and knowing that it's real, and then it's also one of those things when you get to see the pictures at the end... Mm-hmm. Always makes a movie ten times. Definitely, better. yeah. Uh, but he was just a nobody, uh, super Christian. Right? I forget what type of uh, sector or whatever. Yeah, he just, was in. I think just cri- like the yeah. um, Christian. Yeah, wanted to play football, and he was destined. He's going to be an Arkansas uh, Razorback, and he was undersized, and his senior year. Uh, talks to the coach of the Razorbacks. He goes, boy, you'll straight up goes, you will never play for me. You're too small. And he goes, what do I got to do? He's, he jokingly kind of goes, like, put on 100 pounds and get two inches taller. And, dude, he just, right then and there, in the movie anyway, he buys, like, five candy bars and then gets super fat. Gets to, like, 350, I think. So then he shows up and his mom scrapes together every penny, takes a loan. At, uh, Would he walk on? Yeah, he goes, I'm going to be a walk-on. And the mom, and all the family's going, you shouldn't do this, shouldn't do this. But the mom's a believer and goes, I love my son. Refinance the house, all that good stuff. Gets a lender car. Um, goes, and he has one year to prove it. And this one guy, the offensive line coach, basically uh, helps him. He loses like 70 pounds, which is all I knew about him before I knew about the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then all, all he does is work on his footwork. And then gets in good shape. Uh, has it the? It's not a spoil alert because the movie starts off with it. Anyone who knows him, he dies in a car accident. Oh man! The like a three weeks. The way the movie portrays it, and I don't know this. What's the, what's the real story? He gets drafted to the Colts eventually. Okay. His senior year, he does mm-hmm. all this hard work, gets a scholarship, and basically grabs every but like. All the seniors by the back of their neck that summer because they're sh- their their team sucks. The Razorbacks are sucking, and all the guys they just want to party. And all summer makes them all work together like the core group, and they fucking go like they almost win a national championship. And okay. it's at one point he he's the reason he steps on the quarterback's foot and fumbles it in like the championship, and he takes the heart. But at that point he won everybody over, and everyone goes, "Dude, you're the reason we're even here." So like, so just, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy, but it's feel good. He gets fucking drafted in like, what do they say like, he gets a, like a pretty good draft to the Colts, third round, to the Colts, and uh, eleven days after the draft, the basically the way the movie portrays it is he's in oh, to whatever, and the guy goes, "You're going to be my starting left guard," and he goes, "I can't believe this." And the whole movie, this is one of those things where it's like Disney ish. Every time he gets in a car, him and his mom have this thing where. Because they meet up halfway, uh, they hit the, when they go past each other, they hit the brake and goes "I love you," so you can see the red light flash. 
And every time, every time anyone gets a car, be careful of those big trucks out there. Every time, so they're someone building gets it up the whole movie, just foreshadowing. Now it starts. Do you think that they really did that in real life? Because that's fucking no, weird. No, but it is a mom go. You know, every parent goes, "Be careful out there." I'm sure that happened. Oh, definitely. Yeah, but yeah, they every yeah. time she goes, "Be careful for those big trucks out there," and he gets basically run off the road by an 18 wheeler. Damn. Yeah, but and and there is the religion aspect of it because like. Everyone keeps calling his dad. He, his older brother is 17 years older than him or something. Yeah. Yeah, like there was a weird gap there. So everyone keeps calling him his dad, and he's like, I'm not his dad, I'm his brother. But he's the one who he's kind of a naysayer, but then... He gets on board. Yeah, and he's doing he's, you know doing the film for him so he can kind of like make himself better and all this. But We talked about this movie before, not on the pod, and I remember we both had the same feeling, which is like, it's like a... a it's a Christian film. Like it looks corn as fuck. Well, and it, I if they they can't take that out of there because of how Christian he was. Okay, you know what I mean. Like, but if they could have done this the way they did the Blind Side, mm-hmm. I mean, this would have. Well, been... if, it, if it was a real part of his life, it is what it is. Well, at one point, and who knows if it's real, the guy who's kind of like an asshole to him the whole time, who's like the defensive lineman, the like high recruit, mm-hmm. who at first is kicking his ass, and then uh, Burlsworth gets badass and starts manhandling him um they're out and uh Burrsworth doesn't drink smoke or anything he's like super clean Christian. edged only thing he does is candy bars <laughs> straight lines candy bars <laughs> uh they're out at a, a dinner and the guy goes hey have you had their famous strawberry milkshakes here and he goes up and gets him a daiquiri with like extra shots and when he finds out like kind of he's like i feel weird and the lady goes oh we're not serving alcohol anymore and he figures it out he freaks out and then goes <laughs> it's one of those scenes again like disney movie he runs around the track in the rain in he's on like a double date triple date like kind he, of thing because he feels so much guilt for having yeah. alcohol in his system but then that's where kind of that's where that guy goes i'm an asshole and so that whole group of guys that were in on it they run with him and that's like that's when, when it's movie style mm-hmm. but that's um I, it's, I'm surprised you never heard it, that name before, because that's fucking tragic. That's awful. Well, and they also now, I don't know how long it's been, but they have the uh, Burlsworth Trophy in the NFL, where it's the highest ranked, I don't know how they, just most successful, um, or maybe it is college football, I forget, but he has an award given every year, I think at the NCAA level, of... Uh, like most improved? Uh, Walk-on. Walk-ons that are like the most successful. Then jo- I, I'm assuming fucking uh, Johnny Manziel probably won that award. And uh, what's his name? Dude, the fucking trophy's sweet looking too. Because it's him kind of doing like a left tackle split. It's a fucking sweet looking trophy. It's all, you know, NCAA don't do anything small. But uh, yeah, no, it, was, it was worth it. Like, so, you, so, so people watching this, it's an, it's an official uh, recommendation. Are you putting that on your? I will record? say that now. It's I, worth a watch for sure. One, it's free on a- Amazon or it used to be Netflix. on Netflix. It might be not, but it, it's free out there somewhere. Um, it is a little corny, but I can put up with corny. Mm-hmm. You can Like I, you always are like, "Fuck, this is cheese." A little too cheese. Do you know the name Hunter Renfro? Yeah, he won it in two thousand eighteen. So is it an NFL award or college? It's a college. It's presented to college football's most outstanding player who began his career as a walk-on. Okay, that's cool. Which there's a lot of them. Yeah. I was saying about that offensive lineman for, I think, Miami, who's awesome. He's got like... Baker Mayfield was a walk-on. Yeah. But that's the trophy. Rachel would pop that up Is he a white guy? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's the thing. So when he finally starts, his, his he's known for he had to wear glasses like the big army yeah, yeah, yeah. big beef before rec specs were around because so he's starting he finally gets good and he's starting and his vision goes bad like uh, over like a week or so his vision goes to like almost legally blind they don't say almost legally blind but in the course of a week when they show it like he can't determine the difference of numbers and so wow. he's poor so they're like all right, let's go to the trainer and gets the cheapest pair of glasses that they basically rubber band onto his head uh-huh. and has to wear those. So he's known for – so, like, when when he gets famous, when he gets drafted, they show, like, the little kids at Halloween, 
they're all wearing the number 77 with just the his glasses on. No shit. As a good, like I said, it was, it was a good heart. It, 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 so- it felt good. It sounded a lot like the story of Rudy, which apparently in real life he's a jerk. Dude, I the more I get into it, and there's going to be people like, what are you talking about? And after watching the documentary, he's not even, he wasn't And even was like- kind of creepy, dude. He was like 26. He was like, I'll go to college. And I'll tell you know, like I just feel like he was, yeah. and he got into a game that was meaningless and did like basically kind of a meaningless play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was a good movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. Yeah, I will say, it came out before I was born. I'm pretty sure. I don't think it holds on that great. No, dude. There's people who watch Rudy once a year. Yeah, because they're, it's a good movie. I guess the worst aged sports movie of all time. I haven't seen them all, but Hoosiers. It's just like one of the most lauded sports films ever has aged terribly, I think. I see, see, I shouldn't watch it because I was going to because I'm like, that's a it's a sports movie that a lot of people. Well, yeah, I was going to say if I was going to it's not a bad movie, but it's just. It's just corny as shit, and it's from a time period in the Midwest when like. Oh, it. I think you should watch it because it's part I have of to. the zeitgeist. Any any, any football. It's a f- basketball movie. Oh, okay. It's college basketball. Okay. It's good. I'm lame. It's good, but parts of it are like, you know, a little cringy. But it's well acted. I mean. You know what holds on pretty well? And maybe it's just because when it came out, I it's one of those movies that are on TV. I fucking love The Replacements. That's Keanu not, Reeves. Yeah, that's it's, 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 it's not really super, like a sports. I guess it's super it's fake, movie. but I like when they're like building the team. That really happened, though. Yeah, not, scabs not, and stuff. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Not, not the, that. Exact but and, and then it's it's funny and it's you know then double cross. But that's him. He oh yeah he wore gigantic pads for some reason. Like uh, he had like um, not the cowboy collar, but is that him in the movie or him in real? That's life? him in real life. Okay. Yeah, those are some military style glasses. Yeah. Um, but yeah, nah, <laughs> worth it. What what's your what is the best and actually I have a book. You gave it to me. Uh what is the best sports movie? What's your number it's hard. I was trying to think about this the other day. Man. Because up there, you know, I'll just throw some out there, get you like remember the Titans was Fucking I, I, good. Honestly, but boxing movies are my favorite. That's what I. Movies. They're always good. Yeah. But which boxing movie? Million Dollar Baby is a great movie. Uh-huh. Which once again, it's boxing, but a lot of times with the boxing movies, it's the outside story of why it's so hard for him the box that makes it good. This doesn't really count, but I loved this movie growing up, and I still I watch it every couple years. Little Blood, Giants. Blood Sport. <laughs> Were you fighting the Kumite? With fucking Van Damme? That movie's sick. I thought you were going to say Little Giants. I was like, that's a football a movie. Yeah, that's good Sandlot, Little Giants. But like, for me, when I'm kind of come up with my best of a genre, like you can't go comedy. No, yeah. I have to throw out there. It's once again like favorite band. and st- It's impossible. But um, Moneyball. Moneyball's is a great movie. such a fucking good movie. Mm-hmm. And even I watch it now, there's two times in it where I got to kind of go. <sighs> really? Yeah. When 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 fucking uh, Andy from uh, what's his name? Damn it. Garden Guardians um, of the Galaxy. Chris Pratt. Yeah. When his character like, you know, he was a catcher, comes back learns yeah, play yeah, for, yeah, and yeah. hits that home run. Yeah. Yeah. And they just do good music and cinematic. And then also when he's driving it, when uh, Brad Pitt's driving in the car and he pops in the CD his daughter made him. Yep. And she starts singing that song. Because he's kind of like contemplating what he's going to do. And you're just like. That is a great movie. I watched that again recently. And also fucking Jonah Hill is great in it. Yeah, he's like. Be- I mean. That might be my one of his best films. I think he does. I mean, yeah, he's been in some iconic films. But um, sports movies are hard to do bad. I, I'm I'm older than you. I like Field of Dreams. is a great movie. Uh, About Coach Carter. Who's in that? That's Samuel Jackson. Nah, I probably didn't watch. I don't like Samuel Jackson. What? <clears throat> yeah. 
He's kind of been that's, the that, if you sure it's a good movie. If you haven't watched it, it's it's, it's um, uh, Samuel Jackson, straight edge black dude, kind of from the ghetto, goes to like a like I forget what it is, but like ghetto ass school and turns this basketball program around by just being like hard headed and like we're not playing no mm-hmm. shit. You know who did a shitty sports movie recently? Um, oh, what the hell's his name? Never mind. I'll think of it because it's on Netflix, so you're gonna run into it. It's on Prime. What's it about? It's what oh, sport? it's it's Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck is this the coach? This is out- the drunk? Yeah, I didn't think that that was that bad. It, it wasn't as it wasn't what I was hoping it was gonna be. Because I thought I liked how it wasn't like he's he does good. And then fucking And then gets caught. He's like, what? I'm drinking a little bit of practice. Come on, guys. You're a father priest. They go, we can't be having this. What was the name of that movie? You remember? No. But yeah, what's your favorite sports movie of all time? It's hard for me not to say Moneyball because I'll watch that every three months. Mm -hmm. Every time I see it, every once in a while I'll see it late at night. I go, dude, it always hits. Um, Remember the Titans is good. Uh, Any given Sunday. Nah. I I put any given Sunday in my top seven. Ten. Okay. I do. At this we are Marshall's good. You ever see We Are Marshall? That yeah, I forgot about. That's a good one. Once again, it's like they're hard. If you were to list what are the ones that are based on true stories, they're probably going to be some of the best. Yeah. yeah. That's always actually. You know what? I watch it <laughs> once a month. Blindside. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I fucking that, love that, that movie. I love Sandra Bullock. Yeah, that's like my girl. I'm. T- I can't even think of a sports movie that's not based on a real story. Sandlot. Just curious, do you consider boxing movies? In, I do. In with sports Hell movies. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Well, I counted that blood sport. In that. That's not based on a real story. I don't think. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> eh, there's some crazy shit happening in some countries we don't know about. Oh, you know, uh, do, would you count racing movies? Yeah, it's a sport. Uh. Is it Rush, where the guy catches on fire? Formula One. That movie is really good. Sea Biscuit. That's a great movie. Yeah, I still haven't seen American Underdog. He's corny. don't don't waste your. Time. He's corny in real life, so I'm, I'm sure. It's yeah. Corny. Um. McFarland USA was pretty cool, actually. I haven't seen that. It's about a guy. He's a football coach. Gets fired, and he like for some reason has to go to this random ass school, like in like New Mexico or like Low Texas. So he, uh, the whole school's populated by like poor Latinos, and okay. they're all. I think I have seen that. They all have to work for like their parents, so they're all super in shape. And he starts the track team, and they just all become bad because they're fucking. Ha- they run seven miles to and from school every day, no matter mm-hmm. what. Just, I think I did start watching that. Some of these, what the? F- Some of these are not even. She's the man. Come on. Well, I mean, we do have the best 100 sports movies of all time book in this house, so using the internet is kind of. Kieran Culkin's and She's the Man. Who's that? Is that the sister from? Kieran Culkin's the guy from Succession that I'm obsessed with. Yeah. You like As him? A He's man? my least favorite. His character. name's Kieran. Kieran, yeah. Um, he's my favorite. I don't know why. The weird. Okay. See, I'd have to take do- like because it battered the battered bastards of baseball. I got to take documentaries out of there no, because well, yeah, no, documentaries are just too great. Yeah. The Natural is good. Have you seen The Natural? Is that the one about golf? No, nah, baseball. I haven't. I'll have to watch that. Oh, you know what? Um, I really like wh- nights before I go golfing. I'll like I'll watch The Legend of. Um, Bagger, Bagger Vance, Bagger yeah, Vance and movie. also the greatest round or greatest game ever played, the one with Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, you're you're definitely more of a rewatcher than I am. That's big you, time. Actually. That's when I'm cleaning my club. That's like first round of the season where I'm cleaning my clubs and I'm like, I'm gonna hit getting it yourself so good hyped up, <laughs> and then shank a drive first hole and be like, this guy's stupid as shit. That's everybody's experience with golf. Um, you know, that movie I didn't find that great. But which P I'm gonna get flack for is uh, what's the hockey where we beat Russia? Ooh, uh, the Olymp when we beat them in the Olympics. I know what you're talking about the miracle. The miracle. I didn't. Maybe I I haven't watched in a while, but I remember watching that going like, 
I guess I it's a big deal, but I didn't think find that movie like I thought it was good. People love love that movie, and I was like, it's just okay to me. It's, it's not. It's it's right right there with Goon as a good hockey movie. <laughs> Goons Which, actually that's decent. based on a real guy. I forgot yeah, about that movie. That's right. I love that well, that's movie. That's what I'm saying. All sports movies are basically, except for ones made for kids, are kind of are always based at least roughly on a real story. That's true. Yeah. Knuckleball was a sweet documentary. Um but yeah, so I it's I mean, once again, it's impossible to say number one. But I, I'd have to either say blind side or moneyball. What Would about it? the babe? <sighs> Top five. That was a great movie. That movie's it? good. And I didn't, didn't find that until in the last year. Yeah. I think you should. That was one, one of the movies. You showed it to me like when I was home and I came in. I wanted to watch it. I was like, I'm just going to buy it. It was like a $2 difference between like renting it that's, and that's buying a, it for 6 bucks. Yeah. I got, so I'll tell you what, I'd have to, same with I do with, oh, we're cut. No, we're good. We're cutting out. No, we're good. Same what I do with my Spotify. I have just like one playlist that I add every of my favorite song, like every song I like on there. My Amazon movie purchase, I got some of the best. That'll be when I die, as long as there's no fucking server crash or something. <laughs> server crash or Catastrophic. turns out every seven years the movies disappear. I'm some upset shit. though, at the very beginning of like buying movies like that, we started on YouTube. So we yeah. have like three movies on YouTube and then everything uh, else on Amazon. Number 42. Number 42 is really good. Ooh, or just 42. 42. It's just 42. 42 makes yeah, me so fucking movie. mad. Baseball movies are great, man. They really are. Especially because yeah. they're like most of them are like old timey baseball. So they're not stories everybody is familiar with. Speaking of baseball, I haven't watched the Jackie Robinson movie yet. Is it a newer one? It's on Prime, yeah. It's a newer movie. You haven't seen it yet. Ooh, I'll check. It's funny when we... every time it's We've watched it now six or seven times. Every time we watch 42, Rachel goes, why are they so mean to him? I was like, that's why this is such a known thing. Like, when, dude, that one it scene... fires me up. Dude, the one well, scene... They lay on the N-word heavy in that, that movie. One, yeah, the one scene where the guy who's been in a bunch of stuff, the redhead, and he just goes, here, and then, 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 then just... I'm like, dude, how much money did you get paid to do this? Now I know, yeah, like, you could say that white people could say M word in a movie and no one gets. No, I know that. it's a period piece, but like, that's something that like I've I've never been on a set of a movie, but I'd go, um, I would like to address everybody here. Uh, this scene's gonna be a little difficult for me, so bear with me. Um, here, <laughs> dude, he don't. It's like a ten minute scene too. It's well acted. That's what it was like. And at the end he goes, well, he don't, Dimash, you don't get mad when I call him a wop. And it's, <laughs> it's funny him justifying himself too afterwards. It's a good movie. I've never seen the goalie. I should check that out. Yeah. Um, we're getting close probably to the end here. Uh, just because I, I think it's coming out in like two months, which might be a movie that we might want to go see in theaters because we both loved it. But the new Joker movie. That's coming out this summer. I think so. Did, did did we end up not? Did we look that up? I think. Um, I think. Well, they were. They're still filming. I oh, think. yeah. I, I, I would. Okay. I would have known that was coming out this summer. Well, my question is. That movie's so. Oct to, oh, hold on. It, it's coming out. Right, I was fall. gonna say October, but it's 2019. Hold on. Um, who was the best Joker? Out of all the movies, everyone who's played Joker. Joaquin Phoenix, that, but I think it's more that that is such a great movie just in general. But it's it's hard for me to not say Joaquin Phoenix. Are I you mean, talking about all wait, Jokers, any about? DC or whatever? Because that wasn't a Batman movie. That was a dope ass Joker movie. I know, but technically he's Joker. I look at it like he wasn't Joker until like the end of it, kind of. I don't like he was he's just. A, the, you're just Joker. trying to come up with some reason that your favorite Joker is better. I mean, Walking no, no, Phoenix no, no, no. is my favorite Joker. No, I, that movie is, I, the new Joker, that, I can't fucking wait for it. Because I like the realism of it. Yeah. I like that there's not a guy. That's what I'm saying, it's not a Batman movie. Yeah, there's not a guy who had, but I mean, technically he's the Joker, but I have a hard time between him and Heath Ledger. I knew you were going to say that, and it's like, there's grasping at reasons to say Heath Ledger was better. And the only reason people would say that is because of what happened after he shot that movie and died. Dude, the, the uh, uh, there's uh, actually, I'm taking this from somewhere else. There's a lot because uh, uh, I fought back against the popular opinion. 
a lot of people really liked, uh, which I just found this out. Who the fucking guy um, from uh, Harley Quinn won? Uh, Jared awesome. Leto. Jared Leto. A lot of people like his is the best. Really? Because that movie actually sucked. I yeah, agree with I you. I haven't heard many people at all say that movie was good. I will say I, I liked his performance in it, but also I think he, I mean, he's just a fucking jack dude. He had a cool aesthetic and tattoos. And I will, the only thing, uh, I like his laugh the best. When he puts his hand up in front of his face and it's got the smile and his like creepy like, I like his, but that's hard. That's why I brought it up as a discussion. Joaquin Phoenix is also one of my favorite actors in general. So how badly he knocked that out of the park, it's like... But again, I think a lot of it has to do with just it's the best of the Joker movies. It's I, just I, a great 100%. film. A hundred percent. So maybe this is well-known information, but I'm mildly disappointed. Um, so the new Joker 2 comes out October 2024, but mm. it's... A musical Fantasia. What is Fantasia? I don't know, but it's I, which makes sense because it's Lady Gaga, but she's a fucking good act, just a regular actress. Now, if it just means there's like two songs in there, but if this is a fucking musical, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be so there's mad. There's no way that it's a full musical. Nobody makes musicals anymore. They don't. Every dude, you know how many movies have been ruined by music? I, yeah. People, some people love them. Pull it up real quick. It's Hold on. Joker 2, Folie a Duke. I don't know if I said that right. Well, Rachel, keep keep looking while I look. If they are saying it being French, it isn't helping me. That's not the same movie, is it? Joker Folie a Duke? Yeah. American musical, psychological thriller film directed by Todd Phillips. Who also co-wrote and screenplayed with Scott Silver based on D yeah, DC Comics. Wow. Now let's look up what a musical Phyllis. It's, psycholo it's a musical psychological thrill film. So yeah, it's a musical. There's nothing really. A Fantasia is a musical composition with roots in improvisation. Well, I'm definitely not going to the theaters to see it then. Damn, dude. Why would they solely something so good? Just because you get one girl we're, who we're can assuming sing? assuming it might be awesome. I can't imagine... I'm still going to watch it. I can't imagine it's musical in the sense like where they even... Every line, they're singing it. That's why I think musicals suck. I think there's no... I'll say it out loud. I think there's zero talent to writing a musical. They don't rhyme anything. I can... I could do a whole podcast as a musical because all I have to do is do this. Nobody makes those anymore, so there's no way it's a full blown musical like that. I oh, you're right. Now, once again, because there was the the one scene where he's dancing down the the steps. Yeah, but that was. But he wasn't singing. But yeah. So so I'm gonna. The sequel has complicated musical sequences that are can be in line with A Star Is Born. So A Star Is Born was good. It just had some music in there. Okay, now if it's that. But why? It's it's an artistic form that we don't understand. Sometimes artistic shit gets taken a little too far. Yeah, because artistic people like it. But I and I, I, I'll go on stand if you want to fight me on it. I don't care. But a lot at the same times with fucking paintings i think it's just pretentious people going like you just don't get it no i think there are that i think you're full shit because yeah. you just don't understand i think genuinely art. there are people who have a different kind of perception of the world and they really want to suck some paintings dicks but i don't get it do you think there are people that genuine bes i can't i we guess talked there are. about this before. yeah we talked about this no no last no week. not paintings musicals how can someone sit there and get like because they love it. Be blown it. away that they're like, oh my God, they sang for yeah. 40 minutes straight. Yeah, it's a lot of dancing and a lot of choreographed I mean, people love high school musical, to, right? To, um, Shit, I remember. would rather watch high school musical people than People like, practice for musicals like really heavily and they work I'm, almost I'm, every day. I practice a lot of things. I think, I'm just saying you're just. Well, also, like, look at it. Like, you love stand up comedy. I don't really, like. Yeah, some people don't understand that. Some people don't appreciate the art the way you do. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing. But I will say this: 
if you're going to make a major theatrical release a musical, just economically, I'm like, why are you doing this? That's I, I'm saying, I, I guess I should, movie form. Listen, I've, I've said this before. I've gone to the theater. I remember being blown away the first time I went to Broadway. I was like, oh, I was a cool teenager and like went on this trip. And then I, by the end of it, I was like, holy shit, that's impressive. But to make a movie a musical? What about that, The Greatest Showman? People went fucking nuts over that. Yeah, people It's about, we're, we're, let's lay this out real clearly. There are definitely people who, who love musicals, and it is economically not a bad decision to make a musical for a certain demographic. But people who like superhero movies, that that demographic, like you want to sell tickets, right? So why would you suddenly turn this into, especially after the success of the Joker, it, there's no way it's a musical like we're thinking. I'm I hope it's like the star. a star is born. I can kind of, the only reason it makes sense to me, which if it's like straight up Broadway musical, I'm going to be mad. But the only reason it makes sense to me is because the last Joker was very artistic with it. It wasn't like a standard action movie or anything like that. Right. It was like an artistic portrayal. So taking it further. We'll have to see. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to hold back my judgment now because like like things like High School Musical and stuff. There is a big market for that. People, there are people who like that, but mm -hmm. like, but this movie, uh, High School Musical, it's kind of the title. This is meant for high school s That's students. That's what I'm and saying. Shit. It's all about the demographic. But the Joker is dark and like, I feel like if I, this is a mature brain to take this in. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't get why for this group of of fans you would make a musical, but we'll see. Unless fucking. Joaquin Phoenix is doing one of his long-term pranks where he's like nah, when the whole rapper thing have you seen the actual we watched, movie yeah we watched it like the day we got back yeah it was pretty wild right it was good he's he, fu he's weird well I will say this he did uh walk the line and he can sing that's a great oh, fucking movie I didn't dude. think about that because in my head real quick I was like that's odd like but Lady Gaga can sing but he's not a singer he but can sing right. but the thing is I'm not a, a comic book nerd, but there's nothing in the Joker lore that is music based. Like, I now I'm thinking in the movie, does he does he hum a couple tunes? A oh little yeah, bit? but that's not. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. No, I know, I know. He definitely does. But what I'm thinking, like, let's now if, if they do it this way, that'll be a cool spin. Because yeah, he does kind of like when he's kind of going manic or whatever. He's on the stairs he's doing his dance and shit and stuff. If they kind of turn it, if they fall in love. Where like it, it's go flashback and forth of them looking like crazy homeless people on a sidewalk. Maybe where they do that pan out where it's them just like la la la, and then zooms in on their brain and it's this fucking like magical thing that they're having this connection uh -huh. between. That I could see being cool. We shall see, but only do it a couple of times. And if I have to sit through more than four songs, I'm gonna be a little pissed. And also like, how much of this movie is a love story? Because like, again, it's the Joker movie. They got it so right in the last Joker, like how big something's of a turn telling are me make? that uh, this movie might set you up for you not liking it because the allure of the Joker and Harley Quinn is she falls deadly in love with him because he manipulates her into it. Well, we'll see. I'm definitely gonna watch it. But oh yeah, not, and not Lady Gaga is kind of one of she, she's become one of my girls. But like I've never even I purposely watched the preview and said no to A Star is Born like six different times. Even I though I it. know people love that movie. I fucking love that movie. So, And like two awesome songs came out of it. No, it's a great movie. Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse. I was about to, that's such a great movie. Jeff Bridges, man. And go back and watch The Wrestler, dude. Uh, Is that the one with um, the Ward? blonde? Re yeah, I've watched that movie like five times. That movie's excellent. so fucking good. The way it ends, too. It's perfect. Yeah. Got a stripper with a heart of gold. Um, let's get close. One little thing. Did you know that, you know Jared Leto? Mm-hmm. Did you know that he was the lead singer of 30 Seconds to Mars? Doesn't surprise me, but no. I, that, that was how he got. I don't know got, how you guys didn't know that. That's, well, I mean, they only had, they had that I one song. I couldn't give you one 30 Seconds to Mars song. You would know the one, their, like, real famous song. Yeah. Which we'll, we'll play after, and if, but that's how he got, like, famous before he became... He looks like a guy who is in a fucking 
emo-ish kind of rock band. He's a handsome fella. I will Is he? I, dude. I mean, he's like Ladies six. Ladies love Jared Leto. Dude, he's like 6'3", shredded. Maybe I didn't he he's play like, a movie where he's like all dis like he's like falling apart like that's part super, of the super super skinny yeah mm-hmm. maybe that's why I he is one of those act I, he's a talented guy he's one of those guys like uh, Christian Bale and um, who else got super skinny or uh, Matthew McConaughey Matthew McConaughey like where they fucking got like yo you're gonna die dude uh-huh. for this thing and then just he's got that natural he bounced back and what's it's like, the movie where he does that Jared Leto. Because I can honestly, that's the you know, I I haven't seen a lot of that movie, Morbius. Morbius, which yeah. sucked. Sucked. I, that movie sucked. Terrible movie. But that's the only movie I've seen with Jared Leto in it that I can think of. Suicide. Well, if you watch Suicide Squad. No, I haven't. You said the movie sucked. How have you watched it without? Because it. W- oh, in Dallas Buyers Club, he plays the transvestite. That is, the trans. Gr- I thought that was uh, Matthew McConaughey. McConaughey is the cowboy, but remember. His like uh, his uh, partner he gets working with. Yeah, him the other is, person. That's where he gets super skinny mm-hmm. again too. Okay. That's a good fucking movie, Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, I've only seen that the one time, but it is a great movie. Based on a true story. Yeah, Morbius terrible. Morbius. I was, was really disappointed that it would look like it was going to be cool. Yeah, but um, yeah, the movies by uh, the UBR right um, crew, uh, a little all over the place, but that's how we feel. Hey, sometimes you you know. We're just excited because we got the grill getting ready, starting to get hot up there. We got cheesy potatoes coming, and what are what are we gonna watch tonight? Are we? Are, We're watching the, the the succession finale. Okay. Yeah, we'll fill you in for the next two hours. <laughs> Listen, I I I'm pretty. I gotta say, I'm pretty good at watching stuff. So like, I'm not gonna know everything, but you know, I'll You'll be able to, I'll be able to fill in some dots. And you've watched a little bit with me, where I've filled you in on. I know most of the pl- I know most and of the players. A lot of it is based on the reality of conservative media, so it'll make sense on that level too. And if not, I'll just get my headphones and I'll just watch podcasts the whole time. We can watch something before that. No, it's okay. We can watch. We can watch that. No, she said before that. We're gonna watch that. What's a, what is was that nine o'clock release? Yeah, but we can. I mean, it's not live. So we could like start something, and then once it's over, uh, well, maybe turn let's it on. do this. Let's talk about it after we end the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I want the fans to be able to tune in and know what's going on after we release this five days from now. <laughs> uh, but hey, guys, uh, this has been UBI Podcast because we sincerely, you guys will be all right. Happy um, Memorial Day. Happy America Day. Keep protecting this country. I am Gene Labordi, my co-host and brother Stephen Labordi. And uh, Rachel doing all the editings and basically making this happen is uh, my wife, Rachel Labodi. Uh, you be all right and have a good week. We'll uh, see you next time. It's Labord. Don't tell me how to say my last name. He's telling me. You can say it the way you want to say it. <laughs>